right, so this is going to be another movie review. This one's called The Wasp Woman, 1959. I love this flick. I'm giving it five out of five stars. This is going to be another Roger Corman feature. Uh, the um, theatrical version is 66 minutes. The television version is 73 minutes. I watched the television version, which has a Jack Hill prologue to film out to pad out the film's running time when it was released to television in 1961. I, I watched the 1961 version with the new prologue, which was added by director Jack Hill. So uh, Roger Corman produced and directed in 1959. Then Jack Hill directed the prologue, if that makes sense. I posted the links to the movie and the trailer in the description section. You'll have to click on dot, dot, dot more to see those links because I put so many dang names in the description area. <laughs> This movie is also known as the Bee, Bee Girl and Insect Woman. Whenever they show the uh, insects, it looks like bees, not wasps. <laughs> All right. A beautiful woman by day. A lusting queen wasp by night. That's what the movie poster says. Once again, the movie poster looks better than the movie. <laughs> the, the wasp outfit looks ridiculous. That is the reason to watch. And there are quite a few uh, scenes like that where she's in her wasp outfit. I've watched a lot of uh, cult cinema classics on YouTube, and all of them were great. I just realized that uh, I, had a, I had one cult cinema classics on my list that I already reviewed. Uh, the Most Dangerous Game, 1932 with Faye Ray. <clears throat> yeah, that one, that one I already reviewed. I took that one off my list. And I added uh, another 1959 movie. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it now. But I'm going to go through my list quickly because I have those two unnamed YouTube movies typed out on my screen, ready to go, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> All right. So this is a 1959 independent science fiction horror film produced and directed by Roger Corman, later directed by Jack Hill, the prologue, filmed in black and white. It stars Susan Cabot. Anthony Isley, Michael Mark, and Barbara Morris. I don't know any of these actors. The film was originally released by Film Group as a double feature with Beast from Haunted Cave. That's the one that I just added. Beast from Haunted Cave to my list. What a coincidence. Both The Wasp Woman and uh, Beast from Haunted Cave are on YouTube thanks to Cult Cinema Classics. We love Cult Cinema Classics on this channel. It's our favorite channel. It's our new favorite channel now. <laughs> okay. We talked about Jack Hill prologue. In Hill's prologue, a scientist, Dr. Eric Zinthrop, Michael Mark, is fired from his job at a honey farm for experimenting with wasps. That's the uh, seven-minute prologue from Jack Hill. The, the founder and owner of a large cosmetics company, Janice Starlin, Susan Cabot, is disturbed when their firm's sales begin to drop and it becomes apparent to her customer base that she is aging. <clears throat> um, I guess they give her glasses and maybe they... Uh, Messed up her skin a little bit. I don't. I don't know what they did to make her look older. 
I guess it was glasses, but uh, she looked the same to me when she took the, <laughs> the wasp serum. Zinthrop has been able to extract enzymes from the royal jelly of the queen wasp but that, that can reverse the aging process. I thought bees only made royal jelly, but I guess uh, <clears throat> wasps can make a little bit. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not a biologist, so uh, don't quote me on that. But, <laughs> but um, seems like bees are the ones that make the most uh, royal jelly. All right, enough about that. <laughs> you know, honey is just uh, bee semen. <laughs> You're eating bee semen when you eat honey. But it tastes good. It tastes sweet. All right. Janice agrees to fund further research at great cost, provided she can serve as his human guinea pig. <laughs> Displeased with the slowness, uh, slowness of the results, she breaks into the scientist's laboratory after hours, and she injects herself with extra doses of the formula. Bad decision. Zinthrop becomes aware that some of the test creatures are becoming violent and goes to warn Janice. Yeah, he gets attacked by the cat. The cat goes crazy. But before he can reach anyone, he gets into a car accident off camera. <laughs> he is thus temporarily missing, and Janice goes through great trouble to find him, eventually taking over his care. He's got a bandage on his head, and he can't remember what's wrong with the formula. Janice continues her clandestine use of the serum, and she says, 20 years in a single weekend. <laughs> she looks the same to me, but she's just not wearing glasses anymore. But soon she discovers that she is periodically transformed into a murderous wasp-like creature. Now, that is a reason to watch. The ridiculous-looking wasp outfit. <laughs> the campiness of it all. Eventually, Zinthrop throws a jar of carbolic acid in her face. <clears throat> all right. I don't want to spoil too much of the ending here. It was originally known as Insect Woman. Um, you can see the picture of the Wasp Woman on Wikipedia if you look it up. Do a Google query, the Wasp Woman 1959. Click on the Wikipedia link, and you can see the ridiculous uh, mask of the Wasp Woman. <laughs> it looks like a Halloween mask. The Wasp Woman has the heads head and hands of a wasp but the body of a woman exactly the opposite of the creature shown on the film's theatrical release picture poster which does not appear in the film like i said the poster looks better than the film the film was made for an estimated budget of fifty thousand dollars which is quite a lot of money in 1959 but still a low budget feature which is probably why they did the car accident off camera in 1962 director hill added 11 minutes to the film for its eventual television syndication release the film was the third released by film group it was released from beast from haunted cave according to tom dirks the wasp woman was one of new wave of cheap teen movies released for the drive-in market they consisted of exploitative Cheap fare created especially for them teens in a new newly established teen drive-in genre. Yeah, that's our favorite. We like exploitative cheap fare and drive-ins. Okay. <laughs> the film was re-released as part of the 100th anniversary of monster movies in March 2010. <clears throat> The Wasp Woman's musical score, written by Fred Katz, was originally composed for the film A Bucket of Blood. So they used the, they recycled the same. 
musical score. <laughs> Which is not uncommon for Roger Corman to do. Uh, according to Mark Thomas McGee, author of Roger Corman, The Best of the Cheap Acts, each time Katz was called upon to write music for Corman, he sold the same score as if it were new music. <laughs> the score was used in a total of seven films, including The Little Shop of Horrors and Creature from the Haunted Sea. I think I've seen all of those. <laughs> On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a 45% rating based on 11 reviews with an average rating of 4 out of 4.7 out of 10, which is kind of weak. Um, what's the rating on IMDb? <laughs> The Wasp Woman, 1959. Come on. It gets a 4.8 out of 10 on IMDb, which is not horrible, but it's not great either. Michael Mark looks familiar. But uh, I think Roger Corman's brother Gene is in this. Gene Corman. Uh, but uh, I don't know what he plays. <laughs> All right. Uh, film critic Leonard Malton gave the film a mostly positive two and a half out of four stars. All right. Leonard Malton. He likes old movies. Guy's an old movie fanatic. <laughs> On April 6, 2008, Cinema Ta Cinematic Titanic did a live riff on the film to a theater audience. It was released on DVD on August 7, 2008. In Courage of the Cowardly Dog episode, Night of the Weremole, Muriel can be seen watching The Wasp Woman, which she describes as her favorite show. <laughs> In 2007, The Wasp Woman was shown on the horror-hosted television series Cinema Insomnia, which I've never seen. Apprehensive Films later released the Cinema Insomnia episode on DVD. Rejuvenatrix, also known as The Rejuvenator, was inspired by Corman's film, with some critics calling it a 1988 version of The Wasp Woman. So we got a remake of The Wasp Woman called Rejuvenatrix in 1995. Another remake of The Wasp Woman was produced for the Roger Corman Presents series. The remake was directed by Jim Wynorski and starred Jennifer Rubin as Janice Starlin. Okay, so you've got two remakes. Uh, Rejuvenate Tricks and the Wasp Woman 1995 version. Um, very similar to The Fly and the Wolfman, this one. All right. Let's go down my list. This time it's going to be much faster. I guarantee it. I typed out the two YouTube things on my list that don't have the movie title. It Just say YouTube. <laughs> I typed them out in the uh, search bar to avoid having to go back and forth again. Jack London, 1943. The Monster of Pedrius Blancus, 1959. The Crawling Hand, 1963. Invasion of the Animal People, 1959. The Jungle, 1952. One Body Too Many, 1944. Blood Warriors, 1993. Uh, Screaming Tiger, 1973. The Wild World of Batwoman, 1966. Queen of the Animazons, 1947. Hell Up in Harlem. 1973, 
Snow Beast, 1977. Platoon Leader, 1988. The Case of the Reluctant Carpenter, TV Episode 21. Sherlock Holmes, 1955. Mercenary Fighters, 1988. The Buckskin Lady, 1957. Stormcatcher, 1999. The Taking of Beverly Hills, 1991. The Manster, 1959. Bedside Manor, a.k.a. Her Favorite Patient, 1945. Dark Mountain, 1944. The Crater Lake Monster, 1977. The Giant Spider Invasion. <coughs> Stick, 1985. The Forest, 1982. Phantom from Space, 1953. The Dungeon of Harrow, 1962. The Amazing Mr. X, 1948. Damnation Alley, 1977. Shadow Warriors, Assault on Death, something, 1999. Law of the Jungle, 1942. Blake of Scotland Yard, 1937. Kansas City Confidential, 1952. The White Cannibal Queen, 1980. Windjammer, 1937. Swamp Fire, 1946. Police Story 4. Blood Ring, 1991. Hostile Country, 1950. Rotor. The Wrong Road, 1937. You Bet Your Life. Identity Unknown, 1945. Chain for Life, 1952. Untamed Women, 1952. The Case of the Christmas Pudding, Sherlock Holmes, TV Episode 23, 1955. Texas, Brooklyn, and Heaven, 1948. And Beast from Haunted Cave, 1959. Excellent. So I watched Wasp Woman. And at the end, on the postcard, it had uh, CCC, double feature for uh, the Wasp Woman called Beast from Haunted Cave. And there you have it. So I did two reviews today, which is good. I didn't really search much for uh, – new place instead of uh surveying around the neighborhood for four rent signs which i kind of slowed down and s look for them on my way back and forth from safeway uh, i didn't see any and then i asked a couple of uh, safeway employers and they said no my co-worker is also looking for a place <laughs> If, if, if I get desperate and I'm faced with uh, living in my car, <laughs> I might go back to the old uh, Daily City li lady who's running an Airbnb motel. <laughs> she raised my rent more than 10% a few years ago. <laughs> and then I left. It might come to that if I if I have to get a room for like a week while I search, <laughs> search desperately for a new place to live. That's like $450 for a room like this. Almost impossible to find, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep bugging my coworkers. I texted uh, Miss Stephanie, my new coworker friend. <clears throat> I told her if uh, there's anything I could do for her, please let me know. And <laughs> I started giggling like I always do. <laughs> and uh, I haven't heard from her. I just, I just catch her in the warehouse. And that's the only chance I get to talk to her. She's not responding to any of my text messages, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> maybe she's still trying to get back together with a boyfriend or something. I don't know. <clears throat> None of my business, I guess. 
I shouldn't be concerning myself with other people's affairs. <laughs> but I do. And, um, yeah, I guess I'll watch Jack London next. Got a lot of these uh, cult cinema classics still through. I hope you're enjoying my videos. I know Karate Man's into action movies. He's probably <laughs> anxious to go further for me to go further down from my list. I didn't get any comments from the Australian mates yet, but I'm sure they're coming later this week. My first comment came from uh, Professor Quiz because he's on the same time zone. <laughs> The People's Republic of California <laughs> time zone. And um, and he said he's not a big fan of G.I. Joe movies. <laughs> I think the only one that I really liked was From Here to Eternity, right? What did I give From Here to Eternity? Uh, been a very unproductive day. The lady who was supposed to call me for the uh, caretaker job, which would have helped me find a, a new place to live probably with an elderly person who can't afford a uh, an at-home nurse. to take care of her. Kind of like the lady who died recently upstairs. <laughs> From here to, okay. Yeah. From here to eternity, I gave <clears throat> five out of five stars. That's the only film that I can think of about World War II that I really enjoyed. <laughs> there might be some more that I forgot, but uh, that's the only one that I really remember. Okay. And Professor Quiz says he likes espionage spy films. Although I, I'm not crazy about those, but uh, he's right. It's probably uh, a couple notches higher than uh, World War II propaganda films, now that I think of it. I mean, it's not as bad. Still not a uh, great genre. The espionage spy film, but... Uh, <clears throat> definitely better than uh, World War II propaganda. Well, I've said enough about that. I think I've beaten that dead horse. Now I'm ready to fire up another uh, another greasy bacon burger. I don't know if my stomach can handle it. Maybe I should just go for the bacon. And uh, fire up a bag of popcorn for Jack London. I don't know. I guess I'll just uh, do the hamburger thing. I'll make it a little smaller this time. <laughs> Laters.